Hey everybody, it's Sharon here. And about a couple weeks ago, I did a video on uh, predicting the forecast with some persimmons. And you know, we have never eaten them before. And after I made the video, I thought, well, why don't we? Um, I don't know if it's just the growing season this year, but we have probably about a dozen trees and they're around the pond mostly. Some of them are in, uh, actually on the driveway too but they are packed with persimmons. Now, I know that um, a lot of animals eat it, a lot of the rodents, a lot of like uh, raccoons, deer love them. I'm sure there's other things that eat them too, possums. So I thought, you know what? I don't want them to all go to waste. I'm sure some critters would eat them, but hey, maybe we need to try some. I mean, they're on our property. We need to enjoy some of the things that nature is producing for us. So I went out and started picking some. It was a beautiful fall day. This was uh, last week. And you can see that they're all at different stages. So it's kind of like grapes or berries. There's some that are ripe and some that aren't. Now the key is to picking the ripe ones. And the one up there is definitely ripe. It's about to fall off and you can see it's very wrinkled. The one below it is also getting wrinkled and that's also a good one to pick. You can see those are what they look like before they're ripe and they're very firm. You don't wanna eat those because those are actually like an astringent, very um, puckery. Now the ones on the ground are very tempting because they're already off, but like I said, there's a lot of critters and mammals that love to eat them, so you don't want to eat those. So I just started picking some off the tree and um, I had to kind of sort between them all, but I ended up getting a pretty good sized bowl full just to try. So this was my very first time ever working with persimmons. And when I was picking, you know, afterwards I found out, yeah, those probably aren't very ripe. So what I did was I start, I sorted them all and um, I wanted to put them in a box. Well, actually I wanted to put them in a paper bag and of course I couldn't find one, but that worked out fine. Uh, they just needed a couple more days of ripening. So I set them off to the side. I did end up with these beauties right here. You can see the rich, gold peach color. Now you can also see that purple dark. That's just like a blight on an apple tree. It doesn't do anything for taste. So you can eat those without any problems. Now each of the persimmons has a very um, dry, hard top on them. So you do have to take those off. And as you can see, they peel off really easy because these are the really ripe ones. So I just de-stemmed all of those. And I carefully rinsed them uh, because they are very fragile right now. Uh, and I did get them off the tree, so I know they're clean, but I still wanted to clean them off a little bit. I then used a strainer, it's a metal one, and I didn't have like a food mill which you could use. So I just basically broke them down a little bit with my potato masher. And then I used a spoon to help um, get them around the edges and get that really thick pulp out of it. Now you do have to clean out um, that strainer after a couple of batches. Um, but I also kept all of the seeds and the pulp because I know that there's animals that are going to eat that. And I put that back out in the woods. But look at that gorgeous, thick, natural. Wow. It smelled really good too. So that little batch made about a cup and a half. And what I did was then added a little lemon juice because there is no natural pectin in it. And I just let that simmer for a few minutes and let it cool off. I had a recipe and I kind of modified it. So I added a little bit of orange zest and then also some black walnuts. Now I did toast the black walnuts. If you've never toasted them, you need to because wow, it really brings out the flavor. Then I just mixed in the orange zest with the puree. Of course, melted butter, because butter makes everything good. Uh, just one egg and mix that in good. 
For the dry ingredients, I put them in a separate bowl. And as you can see, I don't really measure all that well. <laughs> I get that from my mom. But added some spices to it, uh, nutmeg and cinnamon, a little salt, a little baking soda, and baking powder. And I'd forgotten I needed a little bit of vanilla in with the puree. Just gives it a little extra flavor. Stir up all that dry ingredients and just gently crush the black walnuts and add them in there and mix them up good. And I combine the wet with the dry ingredients and actually I was pretty gentle on doing it. It looks pretty fast right now, but that's just because it's in uh, fast motion. And I did add just a little bit of water before I put them into some parchment paper lined. Um, they're like little mini loaves. Preheat the oven to 350 and let those babies bake. And it took about 25 minutes. And I could smell the orange and the lemon. Got them out of the oven. And this is why I use the parchment paper because they come out real easy that way. So it's just a matter of cooling them off a little bit and getting ready to enjoy them. I hope you enjoyed this tree to table video as much as I did making it and as much as we did eating it. Thanks for joining us.